Welcome back. All right, so five games tonight in the NHL. This was the only game that was on for a while. So since it's five games, I thought, eh, I'll give it its own board. Sure, why not? Fill it with confidence. And it turned out to be a pretty solid game. Now, uh, this is a great result for Ottawa. They need to do it again tomorrow. For Ottawa to really and truly get back in the hunt, they have to win again tomorrow. And tonight, they actually played like they have to win. This is what we want to see. So, Helberg versus Talbot. Uh, Sherrod has a slot shot that's held. Brandstrom's denied. Both goalies are sharp early in this one, despite the score by the end. Uh, sends press at three and a half minutes. Kachuk has a chance that's saved. The shots are three to two in favor of Ottawa, four minutes in. Uh, plenty of early hits. Good flow in this one. Stutzl has a net feed to Kachuk. Near miss there. Um, trade of, of, of holds on long shoot-ins. So each goaltender with a hold with a shot in from center ice meaning you can't change, so it was weird. I don't know that I see that very often. Game slows down a bit after a fast start. Sunquist has a shot that saved. Suter has a rebound that's held. The wings press with nine minutes left. Batherson can't bury one in close, and then the puck goes the other way, and on a fast break, it's Bertuzzi with his fourth of the season. When I heard that, I'm like, fourth? Yeah, it's his fourth. Uh, Suter and Sunquist with the assist at 11.48. Sends then get a power play. Kachuk has a wraparound. That's saved. They cycle. Kachuk's denied in close. It's cleared out. Robbery on a one-timer for Stutzla. That power play's killed off five shots. So again, to this point, Helberg's quite the story in the positive for the Detroit Red Wings. Sends with some momentum, but Helberg excellent. Uh, Raymond has a net feed that's kicked aside by Talbot. 49.1 seconds left. The Sens go back to the power play. Lark Larkin tries to argue about that on the way to the box. It's in vain, but he tries to argue it anyways. Debrinket has a buzzer beater. That's held. And so we're going to the second period with the score 1-0 Detroit, even though they were outplayed by Ottawa. And I thought it was by a pretty wide margin as the, power, as the period went along. Second period, Wings finished the kill. Uh, one shot allowed on that. Wallman blocks a Debrinket shot. He was up to six uh, block shots to that point. It was a career high. He had seven at one point. I, don't, I think he ended up with seven overall. Uh, but he got beat up and he took big hits. And after the game, uh, Lalone said he's okay. We'll see. Uh, Sens get a third power play. Lalone was really ticked off about this one. And then on the face-off win, it's wired from the point through a screen. It's Sanderson from Giroux and Broussard at 341. And that makes it 1-1. Then there was a weird bounce off the boards that almost causes Helberg to put it in his own net, but it doesn't. Uh, Wings get their first power play, and they score very quickly into it. Five minutes and 11 seconds into the period, Perron scores from Hronik. Uh, fired short side. Wallman then gets rattled on a hit, really laboring as he went to the bench there. Uh, there's a post for Giroux on a rush. The Sens get a fourth power play. So Detroit has had one. This is the fourth for the Sens. Shots are 5-1 to one. Sens at 9.5 minutes. That power play is killed off. Two shots. Then Debrinkit can't bury one in close. Right after that, there's a fifth power play for the Sens. I don't think Red Wings fans are going to be happy. But I mean, a lot of these calls are legit. Anyways, Perron argues uh, he was he was lucky he didn't get an extra two. When he leaned out of the box and kept yelling at the ref, I thought, man, you're going to get an unsportsmanlike, but he didn't. Uh, Batherson gets a power play marker on that one, though, early in it. Uh, screen by Kachuk in front, Shabbat and Debrinket with the assist at 12.25. And then at 14.10, Giroux gets a goal from Gambrell and Shabbat. Uh, that was five hole on a breakaway, so Giroux with another goal. Uh, and it would have been a penalty shot if it hadn't gone in because he was being hooked from behind and the referee's arm was in the air. Uh, sends press for another. The Wings then get a power play. Larkin has a blast that's held. His next his next drive was saved. Larkin's denied as well. Um, and then there was a post for Larkin. They cycle, so Dylan Larkin's all around it. Reminding me of the game against Tampa where he was all over the place, could not buy a goal, and that one doesn't get on the board tonight either. Uh, things are punchy after a hold by Talbot on a Fabry shot. That power play's killed off three shots. And then Kachuk at 17.41 wires at far corner on a rush. Giroux and Zub with the assists. And then 16 seconds left, uh, there's the sixth wings power play at the horn. Uh, violence is chosen by both teams. You end up with a pot with a penalty for the Senators. So it's 144-4 on 4 to start. Now, during that 144-4 on 4, which is not easy to say, um, Shabbat scores from Giroux and Zub at 47 seconds. Buries it short side on a rush. Uh, the wings press at four and a half minutes after everything's killed off there. Stutzla has a sharp angle shot that saved. Valeno blasts one wide. The Sens clear it out. Debrinket's robbed on a break opportunity. Batherson couldn't bury the rebound. Uh, Stutzla's denied on a two-on-one. Broussard can't bury one in close. Shots are nine to five for Ottawa with five and a half minutes left. And then uh, at 15 minutes, it's Stutzla. Buries one on a rush. 
And so, yeah, the Sens just kept kept rolling. They didn't sit back and try to protect the lead. They just kept rolling. Things get punchy with 2.07 left after a save by Talbot with 15.7 seconds left. The Wings get a power play. Doesn't matter. Your final score is 6-2 for the, for the Ottawa Senators. They go to 29-26-4 with the win. Again, really important that Ottawa wins both games against Detroit. Detroit 28-23-8. 20, they have to win tomorrow as well. Uh, your shots in this one, 15-9 Ottawa in the first, 16-9 Ottawa in the second, 11-6 Ottawa in the third. They outshoot Detroit 42-24. Power plays, Detroit 1 for 4, Ottawa 2 for 6. The hits, 34-31 for Ottawa. Helberg, 36 saves on 42 shots. Talbot, 22 saves on 24 shots. So, I need to change boards. And now we get to your standard four-game board. Uh, starting off with Boston and Edmonton. Now, I, I think Edmonton played, honestly, Edmonton played a pretty good game. They played Boston pretty tight. Um, it was Swayman versus Skinner in this one. Marchand, scary. Uh, early on, first minute, it looked like Nurse cut um, Marchand with his skate as he's going by. It wasn't intentional or anything. But Marshawn leaves the game, and I thought, you know, if, if Boston loses Marshawn for any period of time, that's going to be bad. But Marshawn uh, would return to the game. So uh, McDavid would score at 217. It's his 49th of the season from Dreisaitl. That one's wired on a rush. And then at 230, so 13 seconds later, no sec answers from Orlov and Hathaway. So both of the new guys getting on the board there. That one's buried and close. Kulak then has a shot that's held. The Oilers press at five and a half minutes, but the Bruins block him out. Krejci to Pasternak, that's blocked. We go seven plus minutes without a whistle. Really nice long uh, play there. Not very many shots during that, but it was it was really fun to watch. Uh, dry sidles denied from the slot. The Bruins cleared out. Bruins press with six minutes left. Uh, Zaka has a net feed that's picked off. This is where Marshawn ends up returning to the bench. And at 15.06, it's Felino from Coyle and Orlov. So Felino with 10 goals on the season. Remember at the start of the year when they waved him? And Bruin fans were like, please, somebody take Felino. It's a good thing they didn't. Felino's been useful. Uh, he wires that one blocker side, and that's on a two-on-one. So good for Felino. And then McDavid's denied in the final minute. So after the first period, the score's two to one for Boston. Second period, early jump for the Bruins, but the shots are two apiece, three and a half minutes in. Frederick has a shot that's saved as the Bruins press. DeBrusque's denied and close. The Oilers get a power play. Barry has a shot that's blocked. Uh, Dreisaitl then couldn't bury one at the net. Uh, Oilers cycle. Hathaway clears it out. Uh, that's killed off. And then the Bruins get a power play of their own. Becomes a minute and 13 seconds of 4-on-4. Four four. We have 29 seconds of 4-on-3. It's a parade. And then during the 4-on-4, four four, McDavid gets his 50th of the season from Costin and CeCe at 12-20. And he buries that one on a net drive. So it's his first 50-goal season. Um, they did post on social media a picture of McDavid with the 50 goal puck. He looks dead inside. He he looks he looks miserable because 50 goals are great. What's better is winning. I I really think that's he was probably it. It just to me it looks like he was of the mind of really because I I just lost, dude. Like I don't want to do this. But anyways, uh, so everything gets killed off after that. Marshawn has a shot that's blocked. Clifton. Uh, has a three-on-two shot that deflects high. There's a press by the Bruins with three minutes left. And then with 30 seconds left, Pavel Zaka scores from Pasternak and Forbert. So Zaka stays hot, and it's 3-2 to two Boston after two. Third period, early chances for Yamamoto. The Bruins are having turnover issues. Things get punchy on a hold by Swayman. Uh, Bruins have a three-on-two. That's broken up. Marshawn has a wraparound that misses. Uh, Fogel has a tip shot. That's held. Shots on net are 5-1 to one Evans and seven and a half minutes in. Bruins press at nine minutes. They don't get shots out of that, though. Uh, the, Bru the Oilers press with eight minutes left, and on the next whistle, they did play Deutschland by Rammstein for maybe five seconds. <laughs> Felt like five seconds, but I'm like, you know, I always put that on the board, and I'm pretty sure it's always Edmonton where I hear that song. So to the DJ in Edmonton, tip of the cap. Uh, so my favorite song ever from Rammstein. Just, just the video is kind of disturbing, but it's an absolutely great song, so I don't care. Uh, so the Bruins are defending a lot in the second half. Made me a little bit nervous. They were sitting back a little bit too much, I thought, especially considering McDavid, Dreisaitl, that dangerous combo. 4.30 left, though. The Bruins get a power play, and it's four minutes. Marchand's denied, and then they had a minute and 56 seconds of five-on-three. Now, during that five-on-three, I think the best scoring chances were for the Oilers. Nurse was denied on a three-on-five rush. Uh, but th that's killed off, but it does take... A lot of time off the clock so then you're down to 30 seconds left Boston make sure they can't pull the goalie until I think there was like 10 seconds left when they got Skinner out 
Boston wins this one 3-2. to two. It's not the prettiest win they've had this year, but it's still their 46th. They're 46-8-5. and five. They have 97 points. This is ridiculous. Uh, for Edmonton, 32-21-8 with the loss. Shots in this one, 10-7 Boston in the first, 9 apiece in the second, 9-8 Boston in the third. They outshoot Edmonton 28-24. Power plays, Boston 0-5, for five, Edmonton 0-1. for one. The hits, 23-22 for Boston. Uh, Swayman had a good game, 22 saves on 24 shots. Skinner had 25 saves on 28 shots, and tomorrow night Boston plays in Calgary. So we'll see how they do with that one. Next up, Vancouver and Dallas. Now, one might think that because I'm in favor of the Vancouver tank that I would I would have wanted a loss tonight. You know what? No. And I'm going to explain why. There are some, some guys who get on the board tonight that I'm really glad to see they're having a good run late in the season. And yeah, this was kind of a fun one. Uh, so Demko versus Ottinger. Remember, I like both teams, so I didn't really care who won. Uh, Beauvillier has a rush chance that's saved, and then he scores on his next opportunity. At 327, he scores that one from Pedersen. Now, the Stars committed tonight, if they allow the first goal, they're 7, 8, and 8. Yeah, that third 8, it just, the third column being 8, that's just, that's the one that frustrates me. It would be a 9 by the end of the night. Uh, so that one caught Ottinger off guard. The Canucks press for another. The shots are 4 to 1 in favor of Vancouver at 6 minutes. Canucks get a power play. That leads to a shorthanded goal. Isn't this 11 against Vancouver? That's tremendous. It's Jamie Benn from Sagan at 8.37. It was a shorthanded break five hole. Uh, and also Demko just backed in way too far on that one. So that made me a little bit nervous. Uh, Demko, though, had an excellent game despite the score on this board. And then 23 seconds later, screenshot tipped in by Dries. Garland and Willannon with the assists. So there's Dries with a goal. And there's Willannon on the board. Why wasn't he in the Canucks lineup all year? Why? Why? Why wasn't he in the Canucks lineup all season? I, I, I'm, this is an honest question for me. I don't understand. He's a good defenseman. I don't understand. So, Canucks go back to the power play. Kuzmenko has a tip shot that's held. That's killed off. Uh, the Canucks press with five and a half minutes left, and eventually they get another one. It's Pud Colson from Ratu and Hughes at 15.03. I believe that's Ratu's first point as a Canuck. Great news right there. So again, this is what I like. Put Colson with a goal, Ratu with an assist. This is the stuff you want to see if you're a Canucks fan. Yes, it's great if they finish at the bottom of the standings and get the number one draft pick, but seeing these young guys getting on the board, that's key too. So then things get pushy after a hold by Demko with the Canucks now up 3-1. to one. Stars press with a minute and a half left. There's a near miss for Delandria. It's 3-1 to one after one. Second period. Hughes has a shot that saved the Stars clear. Marchment misses high in from in close because he doesn't score goals anymore. Uh, Demko holds on to a Miller shot, and then Dodonov. His first game as a star, and he buries one on a break. Uh, Johnston and Suter with the assists at 433, and I thought Dodonov was good tonight, so that's good. Uh, delay of game gives the Stars a power play. I believe the Canucks had three of those in this one. Uh, near miss for Robertson. Lundqvist has a screenshot that's held. That power play's killed off. Suter's denied on a 2-on-1. -on the shots are 9-2 to -two for Dallas at 9 minutes. It doesn't get better. Uh, pressed by the Stars at 9.5 minutes, but then Beauvillier wires one top corner. From Hughes and Kuzmenko at 11.28. The Stars get a power play. That's killed off. So I wondered what was going to happen tonight. Because the Stars power play I think came into this one too for their last 34. This is why when people say you're really mean to Dallas and the power rankings. You really need to be nicer. Why? They can't score on the power play. Generally before this game they've had trouble scoring goals at all. They don't win in overtime. They, you need to win and they're not winning. So that's that's a problem. And uh, it, it just continues. So... Um, at any rate, Beauvillier gets that one. Then there's a power play for the Stars that's killed off because apparently even though Vancouver has the worst penalty kill, arguably ever, um, yeah, the, the power play for Dallas just doesn't quite have it, although they would get one eventually because you have to because it's the Canucks penalty kill. Canucks press with four minutes left. Dodonov can't bury one on a net drive. Then with 2.32 left, the Stars get their third power play and they score on this one. It's Rope Hints on a rush. From Ben and Pavelski at 1746. That was the 17th shot on net for Dallas. Vancouver had three. So, and at one point in the game, the dangerous scoring chances were 17 to 3 in favor of Dallas as well. So there's no reason this game should have been close. Jake Ottinger not really having his best game either. So stars go right back to the power play with a minute and a half left. That rolls over into the third. The Canucks finish the kill. They then press at a minute and a half. Suter elbowed him on down. There was no call. Lucky for Suter there because they could have called that. Uh, Lundqvist then scores at 325 from Marchman and Delandria. So all of a sudden we have a tie game. So, you know, uh, the, the Dallas Stars chant is up and the song's going. And Dallas fans are excited. 
Stars then press for the lead, but the Canucks will go to the power play. That's killed off. Dallas then gets another power play. That's killed off, and the Canucks would press with a minute and a half left. So uh, we're going to overtime, and keep in mind that in overtime, Dallas's record is not great. By not great, I mean it was 2-9 and nine coming into today, which I kept yelling at the TV, but they didn't hear me. Uh, Stars controlled early, Kuzmenko scores, and then they do an offside review. They were reviewing whether or not Beauvillier had control of the puck as he crossed the line and deemed that he did. So, it counts. Kuzmenko gets that goal at 48 seconds from Beauvillier and Hughes, and it drops the Stars to 2-10 and 10 in overtime. Now, people keep saying, well, 3-on-3 three three isn't real hockey. It is. We've been playing 3-on-3 three three hockey for well over 10 years now, or it feels like 10 years. I think it's since 2013. doesn't matter. At any rate, they've been playing 3-on-3 three three hockey for a long time. It's no longer the pond hockey that it was when it began. Uh, there's structure to it. Teams are actually playing pretty well 3-on-3. Three three. And the fact that Dallas can't win in 3-on-3 three three has to be at least somewhat concerning because right now they're 31-16-13, and 13, and all of a sudden... Colorado's right there. They have to be looking over their shoulder. For Vancouver, they go to 24-31-5 and five with the 5-4 to four win. And yeah, that 31-16-13 and is an ugly record for Dallas. And then the shots, 11-9 Vancouver in the first, 20-3 Dallas in the second, 9-6 Dallas in the third. Vancouver gets the only shot of the overtime. Uh, final shots, 38-21 for Dallas. Power plays, Vancouver 1-3, for three, Dallas 1-5. for five. It's a very good night for Vancouver's penalty kill. Uh, hits 24 to 15 for Vancouver. Demko was excellent. 34 saves on 38 shots. Uh, Ottinger 16 saves on 21 shots. I'm getting concerned about Dallas in every regard, even on the goaltending level right now. So we'll see how things go from here. All right, next up, uh, Vegas. Vegas Golden Knights in against Colorado, two of the hottest teams in the West, and Colorado showed they were the hottest. So it was Hill versus Georgiev. On the first shot at 14 seconds, Rantanen says, I've got it, and he scores. This is the third time this season that Vegas has allowed a goal on their first shot against. And the shots are 5-1 to one Vegas three minutes in, so Vegas had some good chances after that. Theodore's denied on a turnover, um, pressed by Vegas at seven minutes. Eichel couldn't bury a rebound. The Avalanche cleared out. Confer then has a one-timer that's held. Uh, then there's a pad save on a Gerard Rush chance. Uh, shots even up as the Avs gain momentum, and for whatever reason, Vegas couldn't get a shot. Uh, McKinnon has a blast that's saved that's, uh, as they press, and then as the period's coming to an end, Vegas finally gets that 11th shot. They were stuck on 10 for a while, and after the first period, it's 1-0 Colorado. Second period, Kessel has a wrister that's held. There's a press by Vegas at 2 minutes. Newhook has a slot shot that's held. The shots are 7-6 Vegas at 6 minutes, so pretty wide open period despite there not being a goal here. Pressed by Vegas at 9 minutes. Strong back checking by the Avs. Marcia So has a shot that's tipped out. And that back checking for the Avs has really stood out to me. That they're just really positionally sound right now. It shows that Jared Bednar has really got them focused on playing their game. And the rest of the coaching staff. I don't want to let the coaching staff, you know, just make it sound like it's just Bednar. The coaching staff's doing a good job with Colorado. So, McNabb has a shot that's blocked. The Avs rush. Rodriguez is denied. Hill holds on to that chance. Things get punchy on the next hold by Aiden Hill. Uh, we end up with 4-on-4 four four out of that, and then the Avs get a 4-on-3 power play. There's a post for Taves. They cycle. Nachushkin tips one wide. McKinnon's denied. Uh, that's killed off, and then there's a rush by Vegas. But at 16-20, Rantanen gets the second of the game. It's his 40th goal of the season, and Comfer with the assist there. 3:05 left. We get two minutes of 4-on-4. Four and the abs with some momentum up by two. So we're going to the third period with the score 2-0. Uh, the shots are 3-0 for the abs four and a half minutes in. So Vegas has nothing going at this point. That would change. The abs press with, at five and a half minutes. Martinez has a, then has a shot that's tipped wide. The fans call one. The referee does not. I didn't hear ref you suck tonight. When I hear it, I put it on the board. Uh, so the abs press at nine minutes. Cogliano has a tipped shot that's held. There's some pushing. We get a power play for Vegas. Carrier tips one wide. That was killed off. Uh, things get pushy after a hold by Georgiev. Carrier then has a rush chance. That's defended. Petrangelo has a chance that's held with 4.07 left. Things get pushy on a hold soon after by Georgiev. The goalie pull happens with 3.40 left, and that means the empty netter. McKinnon from Nachushkin and Lekkonen at 16.33. Your final score is 3-0. Colorado continues to roll. They're 34-19-5 and five on the season. For Vegas, 35-19-6. Shots in this one, 11 apiece in the first, 17-12 Colorado in the second, 
eight to six Vegas in the third. Final shots thirty four to thirty one for Colorado. Power plays both teams go zero for one, so special teams really don't factor in. Hits twenty one to sixteen Vegas. Aiden Hill had a good game, thirty one saves on thirty three shots, but Georgiev had his eleventh career shutout, saved all thirty one shots at his end. So yeah, uh, it continues to roll for Colorado. Kudos to them. All right, last game of the night, Chicago and Anaheim, which is kind of the Bedard Bowl, isn't it? Uh, so Morazic versus Dostal in this one. Early Tenorti chance was saved. Nice to see him back in the lineup. I uh, hope he doesn't get hurt again. He's been getting hurt this year a lot. I think he's been injured three different times. Uh, the Hawks were the sharper team early. There's a power play for Chicago. Becomes 50 seconds of five on three. Domi has a chance that deflects out. And then during the five on four, Tyler Johnson scores from Domi and Radish at 535. The Hawks' power play was garbage for months. And all of a sudden now... It, it looks unstoppable. It's so weird how it's had its ebbs and flows this year. So that was scored late in the 5-on-4 as well, but it's still a power play goal. Uh, Ducks press at 7 minutes. The shots are 6-2 to two for Chicago 8 minutes into this one. Power play for the Ducks at the half. It becomes a minute and fourteen or a minute 15 seconds of 4-on-4. Four four. All that's killed off. And then Lundestrom scores from Terry and McTavish at 13-18. The Hawks would press with 2 minutes left. With 1-21 left, the Ducks get a power play, and they score on it. It's Silverberg from Klingberg and Vetrano at 19-14. And it was a deflection in front by Silverberg. Not much chance for Morazic. So it's 2-1 to one Ducks after one second period. Power play for the Ducks. That's killed off. Shots are 4-3 to three for Anaheim at 6.5 minutes. Uh, Ducks press at 7.5 minutes. They're kept to the outside. Fowler has a shot that's blocked. Dickinson tips one wide. The shots are 7 apiece with 9.5 minutes left. Power play then for Chicago. They score on this one too. It's a Athanasiu from Domi and Tyler Johnson at 13-11. Bar down on the one-timer. Nice goal for Athanasiu, who's probably going to be on the move by Friday, right? Uh, he's on a one-year contract. He'll probably get traded. Uh, the Hawks press for another. Grant gets denied on a rush. The Hawks clear it out. Uh, Anglin had a career-high four shots to this point in the game. He, of course, making his debut uh, as Jack Johnson did with Colorado. And, and Johnson played, played pretty well for Colorado tonight, too. So... Domi's denied on a breakaway. The Ducks press with two minutes left. And then with 18 seconds left, Max Jones scores from McTavish. Buries that one in close. It was a nice play by McTavish to set that up. And so we're going to the third period. Klingberg's denied. The Hawks rush. Uh, the Ducks press at four minutes. Uh, Gutman steals one and leads a rush. I think Gutman's playing well. I think Gust has played well as uh, as well. And, and I'm sorry for saying well twice in the same sentence. Just shame on me. But one thing that's occurred to me during this season that I, I think what we've seen, a lot of guys like Gutman, like Gust, who come up, they play well enough. I, I think there's a lot of players who are outside the NHL that maybe do deserve more of a chance than what they necessarily get. Um, I, I think there's a lot of talent. You always hear about, all oh, these there's these garbage players in the NHL and this team, this is terrible and that's terrible. I honestly think there's a lot more talent out there than people give them credit for. There are some very good players in the American Hockey League. Support a local American Hockey League team. Plus, it's cheaper to watch American Hockey League games in person than NHL. And and I've watched Abbotsford games here. There's some very good hockey. So, um, Radish exits. The thing about this is Radish didn't come back, and Blackwell had already been hurt early in the game. So, uh, Chicago, two forwards down. They're playing in Arizona tomorrow night. We'll see who they call up or who ends up in the lineup here. Uh, near miss for Kachuk, the Ducks clear, and then on a turnover, uh, Terry outweights Morazic, and at 8.15, he gets the insurance goal. McTavish with another helper, so that's his third assist of the night. Uh, Hawks press for a response. Uh, power play for the Ducks. Uh, they end up with a 5-on-3 as well. That ends up being all killed off. Uh, the Hawks had trouble setting up to pull Morazic. The Ducks were making sure that they couldn't get set up in the zone, but then they iced the puck with a minute and a half left, so Morazic gets pulled. But Chicago is unable to generate a goal. So their winning streak is over. Anaheim wins 4-2. They go to 20-34-7. Chicago 21-33-5. So both of these teams now have 20-plus wins. Uh, shots in this one, 8 apiece in the first. 14-13 Chicago in the second. 11-4 Anaheim in the third as they lock it down. Final shots, 32-26 for the Ducks. Power plays 2-4 for four for the Chicago Blackhawks. 1-5 for five for Anaheim. Hits 12 to 10 Chicago. Morazic saves 28 out of 32. And Dostal saves 24 out of 26. There you go. You guys are all caught up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.